All right, let's see if this is working because this is the new Be Live. Do I have to click on your face? Do I need to? Oh, wait, you weren't even here. Now Whoa, you're here. Now I'm here. What's going on, guys? Oh. Joel Kaplan here. And the I one and only Andrew. You were hiding, dude. I'm yeah, using dude. the new Be Live, and this is so. I love it, man. Dude, this is trippy. I feel like. Oh. Uh, is your screen changing too? Yes, I can do all this <laughs> shit at once. Hold on, I kind of want to play with this. Dude, you're making me dizzy. That's oh my god, people out like okay, people are leaving. Dude, because... if you guys can't see what we're seeing, it probably looks so awkward because I'm just like, whoa, what's happening? <laughs> it's like this is cool and nothing's happening on their end. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I can all we can also sell shit here. It says interested in live shopping, huh? Add media. We can do so much cool shit. Yeah, guys, I'm moving soon. Got to get rid of my couch. Andrew, maybe we could do a little Okay, walk who wants a couch? We can do bidding. Guys, uh, comment hashtag couch in the comment section. If you're watching live right now, you want to <laughs> purchase my couch. A seven-figure earner has sat on that couch hundreds of times. Yeah. So the value is there, guys. The value is there. All three people want to buy. <laughs> Guys, if you're here live, give us hashtag live down below. Say what's up at any time. Ask questions. But I wanted to bring Joel Kaplan on here to just jam out and just shoot the shit about scaling uh, businesses. So I, I'm super stoked for this because um, you're ahead of me in terms of revenue per month. Um, and you actually started after me with your business. So I'm super intrigued to get into this. Um, I remember meeting you at, uh, at JR's Mastermind. And I was just jamming out and you were like, at that point, you're like a puppy. You're like, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Like entrepreneur really didn't smack you in the fucking yeah, dude, Literally at that event, because I'm such an extrovert and that was my first real event with just a ton of entrepreneurs. I don't do any drugs, guys, but I literally felt like I was on cocaine the whole time. So like, Yo, Andrew, so great to meet you, man. Holy shit. I've seen you in Facebook groups. Oh my God, man. Yo, let me take a picture with you. And then you were literally about to go meditate. So you were like, just, so, or maybe you just came from meditating. So you were so chill. I was like, I was like Joel, chill out for just a second. man. It was so funny. And then it was the first time I met Danny Tran too. And yeah. Danny is like kind of high energy too. And it was like, what is up with these dudes? <laughs> and you had your like blue, uh, your uh, like blue light. Blue, blue blockers. Light. Yeah, I, I had never seen those. So I was like, yo, this guy's like, he's got a little like Dave Asprey <laughs> feel to him, like very like eclectic and unique. Like he, and he, he you, literally, literally, you can say it. I was a douche. I was nah, a douche. Dude, nah, 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 nah. dude, you literally had just come back from doing the Buddhist retreat with yes. JR, where you guys literally went and meditated with the monks for a whole week. Yeah. Which, by the way, JR encouraged me to do when I'm yes. scared shitless for it. Just because yes. I can't sit still for more than like 10 seconds. But yeah. uh, so you were in this like Zen state and I was just like so pumped the whole time. <laughs> That's so funny. You're going to you're going to love the Buddhist monastery because it's not a it's not a Vipassana. So it's just you you nap, you eat vegan food and then you meditate in the morning and night for like 45 minutes. And it's, you talk to the, the monks and it's freaking awesome. Um, it, it's definitely like was it challenging for you? Uh it no not at all really uh, i i actually the big insight that i got is like i was doing like 20 minute meditation sessions mm. um and then when we were forced to do the 45 minute meditation sessions it was like 45 minutes to an hour i realized that i really sink into it around like the 35 40 minute mark and i'm like oh this is what meditation is supposed to feel like wow. i was like i was just wasn't giving myself enough time to sink into it um, so now when I meditate, it's for longer sessions. I don't meditate as much because like it, I do it for longer. Um, but I feel like I get the benefits more from doing longer sessions, less amount of time, uh, times. So dude, um, my, uh, my like, wife's father was like a Japanese studies professor for Zen Buddhism. So yeah. literally when I first met her, I would go over to her house and sometimes her dad would literally lock himself in his office and meditate for like eight hours straight. It was insane. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I do the whole like mindfulness bell where I meditate on the dot every single hour. And by meditate, I mean, I take one deep breath mm -hmm. and that's as, that's as deep as I go. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm, on, I'm on the rookie level. 
Yeah. I'm, on, I'm on like the four or five figure entrepreneur level when it comes to mindset. You know? Dude, and that's that's perfectly fine. <laughs> like with the with meditation, it really helps you with clarity of thought. And like, like I'm reading this book right now, um, the ultimate blueprint for an insanely successful mm. business. I, Eli Wild came in, uh, Tony Robbins, number one salesperson, and like literally showed up to my door. And I'm like, what is life right now? Um, and he told me, to look into, yeah, yeah, he's here. Um, and oh, he shit, told me dude. to look into uh, Keith Cunningham. Eli Wild is at your house? What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's just he's, uh, that's awesome, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah, so he's staying in my uh, my kind of housemate's uh, bedroom. So we live right next to each other. He's in there for, for a couple weeks. So that's pretty dope. Um, but Keith Cunningham, if you haven't gotten into him, he is freaking amazing um, just with actually running a business and not an operation. Hmm. Um, what, what are so, you uh, like? What's like the biggest takeaway so far, would you say? I mean, right. Ooh, actually, can I read these five questions off to you? Hell yeah, man. Let's do so it. So this right off the bat, these are five questions that I wrote down and that I'm going to write down and post in front of my computer. I think they're so powerful. Like your life, your life is determined by the quality of questions that you ask yourself. And these are super powerful. Um, so these are in, in regards to growing and scaling your business. And the first question is, how can I rapidly find the leaks that are costing me profits in cash? Mm. And how do I permanently plug them? Cool. Like his big thing in this book is like being really on your finances Dude. and looking at your report from your CPA every single month, every single week. And look at places where you can plug those gaps, where you are literally leaking money. Dude, a little a little golden nugget there. We use yeah. something called Simple KPI. If you go to simplekpi.com, you could download the software. It's like a hundred mm -hmm. bucks a month. But one of our biggest philosophies at my agency is yeah. that data that gets tracked gets managed. Yes. And data that doesn't get tracked gets forgotten. So yep. literally we became like data fiends. Yes. And now every single team member is responsible for going into simple KPI every single morning and putting in their data. And dude, that's been huge when it comes to like seeing the gaps and seeing the holes in our business. Yeah. Just because yeah. when you, when the data is there and you see like a, a sudden drop or a sudden increase, you have much more control and clarity around what's actually causing that. Dude, a hundred percent. And does everybody on your team have a specific KPI, at least one to track? Yeah. So for example, uh, account managers or client success directors who deal with our clients, one of the things they have to do every day is do five random check-in calls just to surprise clients, check in and see how things are going. Yeah. So literally every day, as soon as they're done, they go into simple KPI and they mark that they tracked five. And of mm -hmm. course we ask them, I mean, we record calls. So, I mean, we ask them to be honest. And um, so they, they add how many, and like, let's say that for some reason they've been super maxed out, super busy. And instead of putting in five, they skip two days. Then we can mm -hmm. essentially have a conversation at the end of the week or, you know, the, the, the week after that and try to figure out what's actually causing that stress. How can we create more space for them mm -hmm. and so forth and so forth. It's pretty That's cool, man. Awesome. So what's it? Actually, I'm really intrigued by these surprise check-in calls with your clients. What What's the flow of that? Like, how long is it? What's the structure of that? What do they report? Um, and I'm super curious what system you use uh, to track uh, your, your current clients. Yeah, that's a great question. So I have a script for my account managers just because, again, we try – we. Marcos and I, Marcos is my business partner mm -hmm. with our agencies. We really wanted to create something that was fully automated mm -hmm. and in a truly service based uh, industry, which is, you know, agencies are service based. You're providing a service to someone. It's very, very hard to automate the human side of it. Yeah. Right? Like the relationship with you and your client. Mm -hmm. But what we kept asking ourselves is how can we, in, earlier you said the questions that you ask yourself determine, you know, your outcomes in your life. And something that we kept asking ourselves is how can we systemize our agency just a little bit more today? So even though our account managers do have some space to kind of be themselves on that check-in call, they have a very specific script that they follow. And here's how it kind of goes. So 
And I don't know if you want me to dive in right now. I could kind of just give you guys the. I love that. Go ahead, man. Just trying to uh, drop as much value as possible with uh, with your audience. But firstly, first thing that we look for and what we tell our account managers is to build as much rapport as humanly possible. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you spend two hours on the call with a client and now you went from having five checking calls to just one that day. If you spent those two hours really building the relationship, because at the end of the day, if you have a very strong relationship with your clients, it's going to be much harder for them to leave you. So to put that in perspective, like if me and you were working together and like I was doing a service for you and I was for some reason like not doing it well, if we were friends, we're going to try to work through this. We're going to try to talk, figure it out, make it happen before you just leave me and see me as just one other service that you get to, to just deduct from your finances the following month. Yeah. So that's the first thing we tell our account managers. Uh, second thing that we tell them is to, at the very end of the call, always, always, always leave on a good note and try to do something as a bonus for them. So no matter what, at the, at the very end, for example, we offer something uh, to get our clients more Google reviews. So at the very end of the call, we always, always, always leave with, uh, hey, Dr. John, before we go, have we set up our free Google review campaign for you? They're like, oh, Joel, no, you actually haven't. Like, oh, really? Okay, no worries at all. Uh, Dr. John, would you mind if I just spend like the next few minutes just sharing a little bit about how it works? They're like, sure. And then we tell them all about how the Google review campaign works. And we're like, great. Uh, here's what I need from you to make that happen. We're going to go ahead and set that up for you next week. And essentially, we're always leaving on this really nice note of we're going to do something that they can look forward to. There's always something new that they can look forward to that's going to happen in the future. Mm -hmm. And obviously, it's not perfect every time. Sometimes we don't have anything to offer them, but even if we do this for half of the clients, then half of our clients, which at this point, 170 clients, like that's still a lot of people that have something to look forward to. So that's the second thing that we tell them. And then um, a few more things. We tell them always be certain and confident no matter what. So for example, even if things are just falling apart and your client is pissed and your client is angry, we tell the client with full confidence, Look, Dr. John, I'm so sorry that this is happening. We are going to find a solution for you. Give me 24 hours to make that happen, and I will be back to you with a very specific solution as soon as humanly possible. So we're always, we tell our account managers, always have that very confident, clear uh, tonality mm -hmm. that, we're gonna, that the client is going to be taken care of. And then last but not least, um, we use this. Andrew, by the way, am I going too deep? No, this is so fucking valuable and I'm taking so many notes over here. <laughs> and I, think, I think these are like the little minutia things that will really move the needle forward in everybody's business. Because instead of your churn rate being three to four months, you do these little things and people stay for you with you for years and years and years. Yeah. And the biggest like 80, 20 behind check-in calls is spending as much time on building the relationship. Like my clients that I know that their dream is to own a beach house in Cabo, Mexico, or I think Cabo is in Mexico, right? Um, yeah. And that they love to go surfing and they grew up in California and their dream is to be able to go back and forth between California and Mexico. Uh, those clients are the ones that stay with you for a long, long time. Or for ex just to give you guys an example, we did a second call with a client one time and we were like, Hey, Dr. Craig, how was your weekend? Did you do anything fun? And he was like, yeah, I actually played video games the entire weekend. <laughs> We're like, really, Dr. Craig? Oh my God, that's awesome. Like, what video games are you into? He's like, oh, I love RPG games. He's like, this is my favorite game. This is what I'm working on right now. Um, literally outside of chiropractic, I'm a huge video game addict. And what we, what we then did is we told him, hey, Dr. Craig, just wait. There's going to be a surprise coming uh, for you in the mail again building something, giving them something for them to look forward to. And then we sent him a video game that he was talking about that he was going to start playing next. And like when we, when he got that video game, he literally was like in pure shock. And he sent us this massive uh, thank you email to our entire team. Like, I cannot believe a marketing agency cares so much about me to the point that they will go out and buy a video game, write a personalized note and then send it to my house. Wow. So, 
those are the moments that allow you to build an agency with an, an insane retention rate. And that's only possible if you truly build deep relationships. Yeah. So honestly, like there's more that I was going to share and there's a whole script that we go through and there's different scenarios that we give our, our team to be able to work through, but forget all that. The, the thing that matters most is building strong relationships with your clients. That's, that's yeah. what I mean at least. So powerful. I took notes over here. That is extremely valuable. Um, one thing that we've done, uh, and, and you can take this, um, we, uh, we ask one of our first questions when we onboard a client is, hey, what was your favorite toy when you were eight years old? It's like, uh -huh. what? What? They tell us that toy. And then we Dude, said, yeah, I'm right. Now. I'm stealing that one. I'll yeah. get you credit though. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah. Literally, like two years later, I'm going to be like, guys, this changed everything. <laughs> <laughs> this, this took no me one. seven figures to eight figures just sending out toys. Dude, literally, no one has left us since the live with Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Dude, that's genius because now you're tapping into like some deep um, – it's like going to Disneyland or Disney World. It's like it puts you into this like state of wonder. Yeah. And uh, you tap into some much more deep – uh, emotions of nostalgia. So yeah. dude, and that's, that's how, that's how I want to feel as a client. Like I would love if somebody sent me a toy, my favorite toy from when I was like, I would love if somebody sent me Legos that I could play with. Right. Like you, that is so valuable. Like it's not just about business, business and churn rate is directly related to like how you connect with your clients. And if you can do it on such a deep level, like that or figuring out that they love video games and sending them their next video game that costs you like 50 bucks maybe for like them staying on for an additional year. I think, yeah. <laughs> like yeah, we do like, we do some crazy hard. shit too. Like for example, we had a client that we truly did screw up uh, because they were supposed to start their campaign on a given week. And then we messed up the start date and then there was some confusion and then we set another date to start and then we still didn't start it. So we were really in the wrong which by the way, like as an agency owner, when you are wrong, you have to full, take full responsibility for it, yeah. even though it's so much easier to just blame the other person, mm -hmm. uh, which is something that I used to do as well. So I'm not saying that I'm perfect by any means, but now when we have an issue, I always ask myself first, what, what, can, what could have we done better to, uh, to prevent this from, from happening in the first place? And anyways, this one time, this client, we just screw up their lawn state and, uh, you know, it happens, yeah. but we literally call them and we're like, what is your favorite restaurant in your, in your hometown? Ooh. Um, and he was like, Oh, I love this restaurant. We're like, got it. And what is your favorite breakfast, uh, breakfast food? And he told us his favorite breakfast food. We're like, perfect. And then we kind of ended it there. Still kept it vague. I mean, I think he knew what was coming, but we didn't tell him, yo, we're going to send you breakfast and pay for your dinner for you and your family. But, we literally called Uber Eats. We called the breakfast place. The next morning, Uber Eats showed up to his practice with breakfast all ready to go. And then we made an, a reservation for him and his wife that weekend at the local restaurant that they both wanted to go to on like a $150 tab so they could really just go all out. Um, wow. And that guy's been with us ever since. And he's like, guys, literally, I was on the verge of just like telling everyone not to go work with you guys. And he's been yeah. with us for probably over six months now. So dude, that's awesome. I feel like so many people get caught up and I definitely did this in the past where I would get caught up and like, it's, it's not me, it's them, right? Like you may fuck something up, but then they take it totally to another level and then you get angry at them. And it's like, just suck up your pride and like really treat them like a human being and give them the experience that they're paying for. Right. So I <laughs> It's hard. Yeah. Because you know? it's like easier to just blame someone else and just remove all responsibility from yourself. As humans, we want to get as much responsibility off our plate as possible. And we're going to dive into this, but having your core values into your uh, for your business is so crucial. And one of ours is radical responsibility where like literally the financial team fucks up. That's That's my responsibility as CEO. That's Grant's responsibility as the sales guy. That's Tasha's responsibility as the executive assistant. There's something that we can always do to help and like 
this this whole business is our responsibility. Yeah, hundred percent. Like when me and Marcos first started our agency, and one of the reasons why we grew so fast is because we started seeing a trend where all these marketing agencies were blaming their clients yes. that they couldn't close. Oh, they suck at sales. I sent them so many leads. Why can't they just get them to convert? Yes. And I literally, I'm like, Marcos, this is an opportunity to literally differentiate ourselves from absolutely every other marketing agency in the game. And what we did, and this is a, uh, uh, not that many people know about this because it's our unique selling proposition, but we partnered up with our highest performing client to come in and coach every single one of our clients on how to take the leads and actually convert them into sales. Yes. So we took full responsibility over that issue instead of just yes. blaming the clients for not being able to close. And then now we're able to literally tell every any potential prospect that what makes us different is that all these other marketing agencies over here, they're going to send you leads. Whereas us over here, not only are we going to send you leads and guarantee those leads, we're also going to give you everything you need, including a full-time coach to be able to help you convert those leads into an actual return on your investment. So smart, dude. I fucking love that. It's the same thing in like the course creation and the coaching space too, where I see influencers being like, literally, I've seen a few influencers say that my students are so stupid. And it's really? like, Dude, no. there's, there's one guy that you know that's pretty prominent that always talks shit about his students. Uh, and it's like, why? No, put him on the gauntlet, dude. No, I'm just kidding. We should. It, we can't yeah, start calling people. <laughs> I think a big reason for it is their own insecurities, where they're literally just providing a course, and they're like, "Why is nobody take action on my course?" Because that's not how people fucking learn. They need accountability. They need mentorship, right? And then they blame those people because people aren't getting results in their course. And then it's just, they get mad at them. And then it's just this whole hubbub. And it's like, you're not going to be able to scale your business that way. Like, no, you and not, or you're going to feel like shit. While you exactly. Yeah. And, then and, and for you and I, we're not thinking about like having next month be our biggest month. We're thinking like three years down the road, like, this is where we want to be. We want sustainability in our business now so we can scale for the long haul. And I think a lot of marketing out there is so short-sighted where it's like you'll peak in like six weeks and then after the program you'll plummet when it's like, no, you should be building out the foundation at this point and then build for the next three years, the next five years, the next 10 years because this is your life. This isn't like a get rich quick scheme. It's your fucking life. You're building out an asset for yourself, which is your business, which you should be building it out to be sellable, which should have IP, which should have methodologies, which should have your own shit in it instead of stealing everybody else's shit. Uh, so that's that's my rant. Dude, I'm, you're preaching to the choir. I'm like, we can just end it there if you want. I think that if we just, up, <laughs> just mic, drop the mic. Okay, cool. Um, See you guys. <laughs> no, just Dude, I, uh, that's that's next level. Like literally, uh, we're working on some top secret projects on our end, and t like taking a taking a note of, a, 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 out out of what you just said. Like we literally have been creating new Google Drives, new Slack channels, yes. new Asanas, just for this new yeah. entire business because we're thinking five or 10 years down the road, how are we actually going to sell this thing? Not how do we make so much money right now? Yes, dude. And those three things you mentioned, Google Drive, Slack and Asana. Oh, when we yeah. fully, like we were dabbling for like a year when we fully adopted those three things, that's when our structure, our organization, our communication just took the fuck off. Um, yeah. with fully adopting those things and only hiring a players in our business um, where things really came together. Um, and do you, do you guys meet on a daily basis? We meet on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So we have our long meeting with our entire team on Monday and then with our core team on Wednesday and Friday. Um, and in between we use the, we use the shit out of the Slack channel. Have you guys ever tested meeting every single day? even for shorter times? Yeah, we're, we're, we're definitely trending in that direction. Um, and we've upped the time that we're meeting on uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, 
but like I'm sure that would enhance the communication even more like 15 minutes in the morning on Tuesday and Thursday. Dude, something that we did that radically changed the game for us and just made us way more efficient, way more organized, way more on the same page for absolutely everything is we started to meet every single day for a full hour. And we essentially, and this is a a little golden nugget around how my seven-figure agency runs, but for those of you that don't know, my agency and all of my team members are 100% remote. Even if they're working in the US, they still work from home. So we have some top level A players that work from home, seven figure agency, we have 170 clients and literally it's set up where I only have to clock in uh, three to five hours a week. And when I clock in, it's during that daily meeting. So we meet every single morning from nine to 10. And essentially what we do is we delegate out to all the other team members and then all the other team members they, they don't necessarily delegate to you, but they essentially bring their requests to you. Mm-hmm. So now you go from interrupting everyone throughout the entire day, where it's like if someone needs something from you and you need someone from them, you're messaging them on Slack, you're disrupting their focus, you're disrupting their flow state. Now you essentially make a note of it in Asana. We have mm-hmm. a whole checklist of things to discuss the next, the next day. Yeah, And then we spend that whole hour going over what we need from everyone and just delegating. So Mm -hmm. not only does it get everyone on the same page, but you also completely eliminate random requests that happen all throughout the day. Dude, that might be something to test out. Absolutely. That is so good. So we have a, we have a team of 10 right now. Um, and our leadership team is three people, right? Um, what, what does your team look like? So me and Marcos, uh, are essentially CEO and COO. And yep. then we have two account managers, two salespeople, uh, one marketing manager and VAs. Wow. So the they, VAs do most of the delivery, like they set up the ads, they set up, um, dude, that's, that's powerful. And, um, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, what we, what we started telling our team is you are not allowed to message us unless unless it is an absolute emergency Mm -hmm. uh, throughout the day. Instead, just add it to Asana, to this whole list of things to discuss the following morning. Yep. We'll discuss it in the daily meeting. Yep. That's been so crucial for us is like, don't put an issue or something that needs to be done in Slack, put it in Asana first, and then we have an integration will show up automatically in Slack, right? So that's, that's crucial. Just put the things that need to be done in Asana and get to it, right? That's awesome. So yeah, what I'd love to dive into is the mindset shift between mm. six and surpassing seven figures, which you went through this fucking quick, man. Like you hit six yeah. figures and then phew, right through seven figures, which is absolutely incredible. Um, so what in that period of time between six figures and seven figures with your company, um, what what was the big shift? What were those things that changed? Yeah, so that's a great question, man. And I actually talked uh, extensively about this with Josh Forty uh, on his podcast. And one of my core beliefs is that you actually don't evolve from a six-figure entrepreneur to a seven-figure entrepreneur. What really happens is you evolve from a six-figure person with a certain mm-hmm. set of beliefs, with a certain set of habits, with a certain set of uh, talents, yep. and you evolve into a seven-figure person with a certain yep. set of beliefs, habits, talents. Yep. And guess what's going to happen next? And it's already happening now. I'm evolving from a seven-figure person into an eight-figure person. Mm-hmm. For example, eight figures is like all around creating an amazing vision, leading the team, yep. um, really stepping up my empathy game really under really mm-hmm. getting to know my team so that I can truly motivate them. Mm-hmm. It's much more about people. Whereas evolving from like six to seven figures is all around evolving more operationally. Yes. Let, learning how to let go and just mm-hmm. delegating, learning mm-hmm. how to build systems and stopping yourself from self-sabotage where you're trying to do everything yourself. Yes. Um, six to seven figures is learning how to work from a place of scarcity. Like, Oh, I don't know if this is going to work to, 
yes. a place from abundance. Hey, let's let's throw ten thousand dollars in paid ads and see what happens. Yeah, that takes you from six to seven figures. It's much more. It's it's you evolve from a six to seven figure person, but it 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 shows up operationally. Mm -hmm. And then sorry, I love that answer. Keep going. Um. So yeah, six to seven figures, guys. I think it comes down to a few things. Like number one, again, you have to evolve as a person, and then your business starts to like grow. It's it's very kind of backwards. So for example, uh, one thing that a lot of six figure entrepreneurs do is they have insane shiny object syndrome. And yep. literally the reason that we have shiny object syndrome is because as soon as something gets difficult, we are, our brains are telling you to, uh, drop whatever it is you're doing and go seek some massive dopamine, a dopamine hit. Mm -hmm. It just gives you a massive rush, right? Yeah. So we're like, Oh, let's start, let's literally go after a new niche or, Oh, yeah. why don't we start a coaching program or, Oh, why don't I go back to Shopify, even though it didn't work the first time? Um, so we're essentially like chasing this like dopamine effect in our brains and these all these feel good chemicals. And it never allows us to go all in on something and truly focus through that point of uh, of failure that's required to actually succeed. Yes. So one of the things me and Marcos, my business partner, had to do was we went all in on one niche. That was huge for helping us scale from six to seven figures. Yep. And I told this story on Josh Forty's podcast, but I think it's a pretty good one. So I'll share it here as well. Marcos and I got to the point where things were so crazy and we were like hitting all these walls, stuck around like 20 to 30K a month. And it was just a nightmare and we were all over the place and mm -hmm. we we're working crazy hours. So we literally signed a contract with ourselves that said, that if we switched niches at any point in time over the next six months, we would get kicked out of the company. And we literally printed it out, we signed it, we put it on the wall. That was great. So that forced us to go all in. Yeah. And essentially burn the ships. We burn the boats there, yeah. And make it happen. So it's like, but that was like an emotional thing that me and Marcos had to go through internally for it to be able to actually show up in the business, right? Yeah. So that's one example, there's, there's many other, uh, examples of six to seven figures. But that's just one of the main ones that I see. Dude, that's crucial. Committing to one point, one central direction that you're going specific to niche and specific to your goals. That was huge for us too. Like as soon as we nailed down our offers and created the maximization model that moves people from the group growth to the mo group growth monetization blueprint, to Authority Accelerator, to Authority Accelerator Elite. And we fully committed to those programs with creating no other programs. We haven't created a program, another program in over a year. Um, what that's allowed us to do is make those programs badass. Like I don't trust any coach or any course creator anymore that creates a new course or program every three months, every six months. Like don't trust them anymore. Um, because, and also one thing that a lot of people don't realize is that when you go all in, Yep. It's actually the only way for you to fully capitalize on the compound effect. Yes. If we talk about like hockey stick growth and like this rapid exponential growth and really what ended up happening to our agency. Like we went from like, if you look at our mint account and you see our finances, it was like, doo -doo 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 -doo, and then it just took off. And yeah. the only reason why is because we truly went all in on one niche. We figured out how to get them better results than everyone else. Once we had a fifth, like a, a base of like 50 clients, it's easier to get results. It's not, it's easier to turn those 50 into a hundred and those a hundred yeah. 200. Um, all these things happen uh, as a result of the compound effect, which is only possible if you go all in on one thing. Yeah, dude. And I think the coolest thing that I have now and that you have is that now we're just like kind of turning levers here and there, right? So going from six figures to seven figures is building that team, turning those levers um, then eight figures from my understanding is more vision, more really getting your core values ingrained into your culture and training your team, all that stuff. It's much more complicated, I think. Yeah, <laughs> of course. It's like, it seems easier. You're like, oh, just set up, set up a culture, get people excited. Exactly. And it's like, it, it's probably way more complicated. Yeah. I think the coolest thing though, um, from our transition or from literally moving, like you said, from a six figure person to a seven figure person 
is learning the different systems and just learning which levers I need to tweak that I need to twist, right? So like a, a, a lot in the space that we're in, like everything is the marketing system, like webinars, email sequences, Facebook ads, that's your marketing system, right? But you have so many other fucking systems, like you, like your financial system, uh, your planning system, your number system, your sales system. And like when I was able to break that down and literally put it into my Google Drive that way, now I'm just like, oh, I need to twist this, I need to twist that, I need to delegate this, I need to delegate that. Okay, okay, our quarterly rock this quarter, like our main one is building out um, an affiliate program, which is on the referral system, right? So like, it's just, it's so cool once you break that down in the different systems and just twisting the lever. I think that was the biggest shift for me. And um, I'd like to add one more thing. I was bouncing between 40 to 60 K per month. And I was working really, really fucking hard to do that. And it felt really good to stockpile money. It felt really good to have a half million dollars in my bank account and it looks sexy. But ultimately what I realized is like, that isn't gonna help me get where I need to go, where I want to go, which is building out a business, a team, an asset, something that I might wanna sell one day, but building that out where I'm just stockpiling money. I feel like a lot of solo entrepreneurs get so stuck in like, I need to have this amount of money in my bank account but I'm not willing to watch it go out, right? But like we, 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 like we literally love to just get rid of our money. And yeah. Like, cause it's, it's, it's literally what you said. It's like some people invest in real estate. We're literally investing in our business. And it's like, just like some people might graduate from buying, you know, single family homes to then like a duplex. And then from a duplex, yeah. to like a 20 door complex, we're essentially starting to build it out. So eventually we have this insane machine and yep. it's like we have, instead of just having a thousand doors, we have a business with a hundred employees. <laughs> Dude. Yes. And it, like, why would you just settle for where you're at when you can delegate and like leverage? Like the big thing in this book, the first chapter is learning about the different types of leverage, right? Mm -hmm. And people leverage using other people's time to build your business where you pay them. Like that's the ultimate leverage that you can use for your business. Um, yeah, dude, some people like yeah. to go to the bank, take out a loan, that's leverage, that's financial leverage. We mm -hmm. hire amazing team members who can execute on our vision and that's yep. leverage as well. Yeah. So, exactly. Dude, I think we're on the same page, like hundred percent. I know, this is oh, fucking awesome. Like, I don't know if I wanna add anything. You Like if I add anything, it's like, it might just make it not perfect, which it is right now. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Oh, um, so we talked about mindset. What else would you like to chat about here? Like what, what are these big shifts? What do you really want to dive into? I'm trying to think like big shifts, like another thing that I, I see a lot of six figure entrepreneurs struggle with and people that fix this are able to quickly transition into seven figures is not being afraid to build a team. Because yep. if you think about it, if it's just you and you're a solo entrepreneur, just hiring a VA, just a VA to do very basic stuff, even if it's more technical stuff, even if it's very basic stuff, you're doubling, instantly doubling your output yep. instantly. If you hire a VA to work for you full time for like 500 bucks a month, you have instantly not like it doesn't take any time. You literally instantly double your output and that has an exponential effect on your business. Now, let's say you add two or three, then that, that output triples, quadruples pretty much immediately. Yeah. So one of the big shifts that took us from six to seven figures as well was not being afraid to invest into talent and into building a team because that, like you said, gives us the ultimate leverage. Yeah. And this is something where I see a lot of entrepreneurs wait way too long. Um, you know, they wait till they have a ton of money in their bank account when it's like, dude, just suck it up, pay the $500 for a VA. And you literally just went from having 40 hours of, of manpower a week to 80 hours of manpower. A week. Yeah. 
And if you pay a thousand, a measly thousand dollars a month, you went from 40 to 120 hours of manpower a week. Mm. Just imagine what's possible by tripling your time. Yeah. The ROI of that is absolutely incredible. But where I think people get hung up is like, what do I have them do? Right. Um, and people get hung up on that. And they don't know how to communicate. It goes back to like what we said earlier with Asana and Slack. Like there are so many things that will come up while you're working and you ask yourself, why the fuck am I doing this? I should not be doing this. Then you create a quick loom video, you pop it into Asana and then you send it over via Slack and your VA does that, right? Dude, and it's, it's, I used to struggle with that exact question like, oh, what do I have them do? So then me and Marcos, what we did is number one, we monitored all of our tasks over a period of 72 hours. Yeah. So literally every single task down to, hey, I sent this person an email, we wrote it down. And by the end of the 72 hours, we had a list of pretty much uh, everything that we did. Maybe we missed a thing here and there, but it pretty much covered everything that we did for the past three days. Yeah. And then we essentially highlighted what are the things we could instantly uh, delegate out. And then we also highlighted what are all the things that we could eventually delegate out. Yeah. And just doing that exercise alone is huge. Mm -hmm. And just to put it into perspective, now I'm at the place in my business where that's already happening. Like people, like I've already delegated most of the things out. Mm -hmm. However, whenever I feel overwhelmed, what I'll do is I'll go over to my to-do list and I'll go through all the tasks and I'll write a little hyphen at the end of each task mm -hmm. and I'll see if I can put someone's name next to it. Mm. So it's like, those are my tasks, but I'm like, Hmm, maybe I can outsource them. Let's yes. find out. And I'm yeah. like, can I outsource this to Brian or can I outsource this to Nancy? Yeah. I think I can put her name down. Give it a shot. And then literally it's like, I may, I may have just cut my time in half in half just by doing that one simple exercise. Yep. And then you have somebody who knows how to do it. Somebody that can make an SOP for it where somebody can plug into that position. If that person ever leaves like, Oh, that's fucking powerful. I love this conversation. I love yeah. how we're not talking about Facebook ads. We're not talking about funnels converting. We're not talking about like any of that shit. Like this is business level shit where I think the majority of people want to go. Like the majority of people want to be. And Dude, you know crazy. It's, it's, it's sexier and easier to talk about those things because yeah. you can actually be completely stuck and still dive fully deep into Facebook ads. Like you can literally have no clients and still invest hundreds of your hours in learning Facebook ads. Yeah. It's the wrong way to do it. But I think that's why so many people end up talking about those things. Yeah. And then you're basically an employee in your own business if you're doing that, right? 100%. Like it, it's, it's great to start out that way and get to six figures and pass six figures that way. But ultimately, like a lot of people want to own a business where they can remove themselves from it and have this system that operates on its own. But in this culture that we have right now, where you're constantly buying these courses and these programs that teach you the different systems, you're basically just becoming an employee. Why not buy a program? Like I'm sure Joel, you have a program um, or, or Authority Accelerator or Authority Accelerator Elite that gives you the business as a whole, that breaks down the different systems and then you can plug those people into your systems. And we literally have a referral base in those programs where we can plug a sales guy into your program or an operations manager. Um, and that's being built out more and more every day. So like, I just see a huge gap in the marketplace where mm. people are just buying course after course after course. And it's like, no, you should be hiring that. Dude, app. you're ruining my pitch. I was going to drop a Facebook ads 2020 course right now on this. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Facebook ad course. You want to be an employee? 2020. <laughs> do you want to be? Do you want to be stuck to your business for the rest of your life? And never, and never scale the seven figures. Link in the comments. Sign up right now. Link me. Somebody said link me. Not ninety-seven. Oh, <laughs> so, um, wants it. I think. Um, I think 
I believe that everyone is, stu in, is stuck in what I like to call you're an entrepreneurial employee, right? Yep. That's stage one. That's where everyone is. Then you have to get into business owner where yep. you're still in the business. You still help with operating the business. You help with delegating. You help with managing, but you're not doing the actual work. Mm -hmm. You're not talking to clients. You're not setting up the Facebook ads. You're not tweaking the Facebook ads. You're just overseeing. Mm -hmm. The dream is then to evolve into founder or chairman mm -hmm. where literally, and this is the hardest one because what you have to do is find other people that are truly motivated and truly believe in your mission to come mm -hmm. in and lead and grow your dream Yep. and do the management and also do it well. Yep. So that's the dream. That's where we're working towards. That's where I'm sure where you're working towards. Um, and like the more and more that you invest in your, in your business, the more appealing it becomes for other people to come in and help you run it, the bigger the vision gets. So yeah. I think it's a matter of time. At least that's what I'm seeing. Yep. But that's, that's like the ultimate where you literally are like looking at the finances because you want to at the end of every month. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Um, I actually did a little breakdown at the gym the other day. I was playing basketball and then had a little download. Um, and I think the 200 to $250 uh, or 200 to $250,000 marker is a very significant marker in entrepreneurship and in the spaces that we're in, like agency and the coaching, consulting and course creation space for me. Um, but like, I think people just don't know what to focus on. So the breakdowns I have is that if you are below a quarter million dollars a year, below uh, $20,000 a month, you should focus on your offer, having a very, very solid offer, focus on your messaging around that offer and uh, you or your business, um, marketing, so you should have one platform, one central platform that you use and email on top of that. For me, it's Facebook groups. For you, uh, Facebook ads. Is that how you're generating clients right now? We do. Uh, so it also depends like where we were at before versus now. So now I'm, I'm the biggest believer in, in paid ads. Like if you can't crack paid ads, scaling organically is possible. What I tell everyone is you need to have massive authority and a huge audience. So if you have a huge Facebook group, you can do it. But if you didn't have a huge Facebook group, like you can't, like paid ads is the way to go. Um, yeah. really there's, definitely a time, there's definitely a time and a place. I feel like too many people focus on paid ads right off the bat when they don't have their offer dialed in, they don't have their messaging dialed in. I think you'd agree with this. Like don't fucking run paid ads if you don't have your offer messaging and sales dialed in. Like so many, I talk about this, I did this, I talked about this on another live like a few weeks ago. Like so many people are trying to make mo like a dollar or a thousand dollars today, right now, this second. I just started, I started an agency. I took Dan Henry's course. I'm ready to make all the money today. It's like, dude, you have never even set up Facebook ads. Chill the <laughs> fuck out. Like, go back to like, you don't, you haven't earned the right to take someone's money. And until, yeah. until, you, until your moral compass puts you in the in a different direction you're never going to make money or at least it's going to take you a while and you're going to keep failing and keep failing and six months later you're going to be like why haven't i made money why haven't i hit, I hit 10k and a lot of people ask me hey joel how did you hit 10k a month so quickly because i actually hit it before even quitting my nine to five job mm -hmm. the reality is me and marcos did a ton of free work at the very beginning we really were just like let's get a ton of testimonials let's really help a lot of people Let's practice as well. So we're getting better at the skill and so that we can provide a better service. And then we set mm -hmm. up a really good foundation. We had good testimonial videos. We had happy clients. We had great written testimonials. We had market research. We knew yep. how to get results. And having that foundation. Foundation, yep. With that foundation, we had earned the right to scale. Yep. And make all Dope. Preach. Like. Oh, I love that so much because that's what we're building out right now is the foundation to scale, building out just all of our delivery systems, really, really focusing on our clients. Um, and then and you will, dude. And then it's like once you have that foundation, then you have earned the right to scale and just watch it just magically pop off to eight figures. <laughs> dude, amen. Because right now where we're at, we did, uh, we've done over seven figures just organically. We haven't run a single uh, freaking right. ad. And 
<laughs> like now I'm going to talk to you about running fucking ads and that shit's going to pop off. Um, and we're planning on starting that in November. So I'm super stoked for that. Yeah, um, dude, that's the way to go. Yeah. But so I'm going to finish this breakdown. So before a quarter million dollars. Yeah, my bad. I didn't mean to inter interrupt. No, you're here. good. I love what you were talking about, dude. Um, hire a VA or an executive assistant. Um, have Start working with people that can free up your time. Those button pressing tasks, get them off your plate. Those things that would take you an hour, you can literally make a quick Loom video in three minutes, send it over, and you're literally saving yourself 57 minutes. And there's so many of those little things that you can do. Just get a VA or an executive assistant in place. With all our clients that we work with, that's the number one thing we set up with them first. Um, and then when you get above a quarter million dollars a year, that's when you should focus on systems, delegation, um, projects and sprints, uh, quarterly rocks, communication with your team and vision and values. Um, and then you want to look for your bottleneck hires. So your salesperson, your operations manager, the, those things that are literally a bottleneck in your business and mm. hire that out to bust that bottleneck. I hired Grant Ehlertson and we literally doubled our business in a month and a half from because like I couldn't take that many sales calls. So I hired Grant and he's just absolutely crushed. You should, you should go knock on Eli, Eli's door. Yeah. To, to, Eli's yeah. selling his own thing now. We're actually going to do an interview in here tomorrow. Yo, yo, Eli, real quick. I got a quick question for you. <laughs> Can you sell my shit? <laughs> I'll bring you coffee every day. Like I'll do other stuff. I'll, I'll do whatever Damn. you want. He is such a wicked fucking genius, man. Like it, he he talks and you just trust him immediately. It's scary. Yeah. Damn. Um, I, haven't, I haven't met the guy, so I don't oh, know. you need to talk, oh, dude. I'll connect you. Um, cool. He's definitely somebody that you need to connect with, and he's super friendly, super awesome. Out of out of just me wanting to learn, what was the role that you? Oh, you hired a salesperson. That's the first. yeah. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense, dude. That's what I teach. Like first thing you want to hire is, uh, sales, then account managers for support. Um, well really it's VAs first, but that that's kind of just like a given. It's mm -hmm. like, if you don't have VAs, you're kind of, you're not doing this entire thing. Right. But yeah. after that, it's like higher sales, higher account managers, and then eventually hire someone to replace operations, replace you in operations. So um, yeah. Shit, man. We went through a lot. Yeah, I think we're good. I think we're yeah. good. You you have an awesome Facebook group and you also have an awesome Instagram. Do you mind sharing that with everybody? Yep. So guys, I told Andrew I wasn't gonna pitch hard. I'm gonna pitch soft today. So <laughs> it's a quick soft ask for you guys. It literally requires like 10 seconds of effort. Uh check out my Facebook group. It's called Marketing Agency Secrets. We go really deep on how we scaled our agency from zero to now we're doing over 250K per month. And we also built our entire agency in a way that is truly fully automated. So I'm, I'm showing up like four or five hours a week. We teach you guys a ton of that content. Go check it out. Uh, we also have a free training in there, which is uh, amazing on how to land a new paying client next week, guaranteed. So go check that out. And then also, if you want to just follow me and watch my crazy lifestyle, which means I just get to hang out at WeWork a lot in uh, Colorado and then do, just do random shit here and there at official Joel Kaplan on Instagram. And I'm also going to link them down. I don't know if I can comment through be live, but I'll, I'll link them down below after this uh, this live. But marketing agency secrets at official Joel Kaplan, marketing agency secrets at official Joel Kaplan. Go right now. That's my soft pitch for today, guys. I'm not asking you guys for any money, I promise. So. <laughs> Dude, this was awesome. Um, these are literally the things that people should focus on if they want to be a business entrepreneur. Um, oh, yeah. And you just dropped the knowledge. Thank you so much, everybody. Join oh, Joel's Facebook group. Um, I haven't asked you, are you going to be at Trap Buyers Live? When is that happening? October 18th through the 20th. I, all right. So long story short, don't break my heart. Don't break my heart. Don't hard close me on a Facebook live. <laughs> Save me from the, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> all right. Honest truth is my lease is ending. And then me and my wife are just gonna, 
figure life out in ca- trying to head to California. Dude, so depending on dates, that sounds pretty badass, honestly. So we're um, in California. We're in San Diego. Oh, uh, that's exactly where I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha, bitch. Hard close. Hard close. Oh, damn. <laughs> awesome cool uh joel thank you so much for dropping the knowledge bombs and just like this was super awesome super high level and like i really really appreciate it dog yeah man honestly like so much synergy i appreciate you like crazy and uh hopefully my crazy energy carried out since the first time i met you so yep it did (laughs) awesome guys thanks for being here if you loved it hit hit the heart hit the like button And uh, we'll see you in the next interview. Peace out.